Okay, guys, time to RTFM with the boilers. So here's a tech manual, and there's actually a few tech manuals in the resources folder, but this is the one that you want to look at. This is the best one um, for like electrical connections. Now, the first thing to mention is that this isn't just your standard on-off control that you see for boilers in most residential settings. So because this is a in a, this is a BMS, uh, and we want to be more efficient with how we're controlling the boilers rather than just being on and off. We want to be able to modulate, so change the heat output of that boiler. And that's where we're going to be using a zero to 10 volt signal to do this. And it, this is talked about in the spec, but just on the tech manual here, I just want to bring your attention to this BMS control section and just read it out to you quickly. So all Wessex Module Max boilers may be controlled with more sophisticated controls such as building management systems BMS using the 10 volt analog input, which can be configured for temperature or load control. Where a BMS exist, exists, it's recommended that heating control, sorry, heating circuit and domestic hot water control is managed by this system and then if you have a look at this 0 to 10 volt analog temperature input chart and we're going to get into more of the details of this in a second but this is just for reference really and to give you a heads up and this basically tells us what that 0 to 10 volt signal that we're going to use maps to in terms of temperature so 0 volts this is the this is the volt side and this is the temperature side. So yeah, zero volts maps to zero degrees. And then let's just focus on this line here. We're using the boiler at max capacity, so 90 degree heat. So when it's at then 10 volts, so the max control signal, 10 volts, we're mapping directly to 90 degrees C. Now if we go five volts. That's then mapping to, as you can see here, 45 degrees. So this is just the graph that tells us when we feed the boiler, say, 2 volts, it's going to correlate to about 20 degrees C and so on and so forth. Just a quick one. Sorry to interrupt, but this video that you're watching right now is actually a lesson taken from our new training program that's coming out this Friday. And if you wanted to master the first steps in controls and automation, giving you a very solid foundation, enabling you to feel more confident in working in control panels, working with systems, understanding relays, contactors, PLCs, and how they all work together. Also enabling you to fault find and diagnose systems far more efficiently, and even the ability to start designing your own control and automation systems across any industry. Then if that sounds good, click the link in the description right now, and I'll make sure that I send you the other early access free training videos coming out this week, and I'll let you know when the program goes live on Friday. Now for the electrical connections, so this is really what we're interested in in uh, this tech manual. So page 11, and I'm just going to turn this on its side so we can zoom in here. And I'll tell you now, ultimately, all we're using in terms of all of these connections that you see here is the uh, 24 volt power supply that we're feeding into the boiler and h1 so h1 here you go input prog client h1 basically what that's saying is the 0 to 10 volt signal which we just talked about or contact so or it's just an on off signal like most people are used to but if you read the spec we also need to take an enable output signal of the boiler and a fault signal output of the boiler. So a signal into our BMS, our control system, to let us know when the boiler's enabled and when it's in fault. We go into the details of what I'm about to go through in control system design specialist, but just to quickly give you a brief overview, I had to spend a lot of time back and forth to tech support to work out how we were going to capture those those outputs because they're not supplied 
natively uh, by this boiler. Anyway, what needs to be provided for this boiler to give us those outputs is one of these Siemens extension clipping modules. And this is kind of like a, an OEM module that multiple boilers, or I imagine manufacturers, boiler manufacturers use to enable them to give them that signal. Now, this tech manual isn't very helpful and pretty much all it gives us is, is this for like the wiring connections, which, which wasn't helpful at all. So I was back on the phone to tech support and they ended up supplying me, the Wessex guys, really good bunch of people, really good support. Uh, they provided me with their sort of in-house tech, tech manual that, um, explains how to connect it to the boiler and how to connect and what terminals are being used for that enable and fault output. Again, all the details are gone through about this in control system design specialist. If you wanted to uh, purchase that course, if you haven't already, but yeah, just a quick overview of the sort of run slash enable signal. Um, and this is for the following condition. So this comes on when the boiler is enabled when the boiler establishes a flame. And then for the fault signal to be triggered, the following conditions need to be made or need to apply. So the f there's a flame failure, there's a high limit, whatever that correlates to that code, which can be found somewhere, low gas pressure and or flue or condensate blocked. So that's what brings on the fault output on the boiler. Just a final reminder, to click the link in the description so I can send you those early access free training modules from the program that's going live this week.